I think there's a lot of bad advice on the internet, but in terms of marketing advice, the only way you could actually implement anyone's marketing advice is if you know your. We are live. Welcome everyone to the Ask Jason Show. I am Jason. That is Megan. Megan is my lovely co-host on this, and she'll field all the questions. She'll make sure all your questions get answered. We're answering any questions around business, life. I don't know. Whatever you want to throw at me. Uh, let's 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 tackle. Get into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into the show. Um, right. If you have questions, just put them in the comments. Um, and if uh yeah or just if you're watching the replay let us know you're watching on the replay uh right replay and then just put your questions in there and we'll tackle it on next week's show we are live every week we've been off for a couple of weeks because of the holidays but we are back we're ready to rock and roll let's go okay okay the first question is from james we're seeing a lag in sales for our online sporting goods store What's your advice in order for us to boost sales? Such a vague question here. Uh, very open. Uh, I don't know. Are you running ads? Is your is your product seasonal? Um, what are you doing in terms of promotions? I mean, it's it's almost impossible for me to sit there and say this is what you're going to do to increase sales. There are so 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 many different ways you can increase sales. If you're experiencing like a downturn, just ask yourself: Is it seasonal? If it's seasonal, then you could prepare for that and you could use that time to build up your list. You could run contests. You could do all that. So you could build up your list so that when you're in season, you don't have to run a ton of ads or spend a ton of money because you already built up that list of people who are interested in your product. If you're full season, which means you could sell year round and sales have dipped, what happened? What's going on? Um, when did this start? Uh, do you experience the same dip uh, every single year? Is this your first time experiencing the dip? We kind of have to reverse engineer from there, but it's almost impossible to get blanket advice. I mean, run more ads, have more sales, uh, run some contests, email your list about the way to get sales. But the deeper issue is we have to die. We have to diagnose why, why it's happening. So for me to give a prescription with that diagnosis, like if a doctor did that, it will be malpractice. And 2024, we're going to watch ourselves. We're not going to get sued. Perfect. Okay. Um, all right. What is something everyone says I should be doing when it comes to running my e-com business that you think is actually terrible advice? And this is from Robert. Uh, ooh, that's an interesting question. Uh, what is something that everyone is saying that is actually bad advice? I think you see a lot of people right now just saying, go across all channels, try all channels, spend a lot. Uh, I mean, if you're just in the, in the question, they say if it was just starting off. Um, no, it doesn't say, okay. I mean, you got to know your numbers. I think, I think a lot of the advice that we're seeing online about how to grow, whether it's an e-com business or any business just lacks a ton of context, lacks a ton of, of just important questions that need to be answered and they're just given as blanket general advice so know your numbers uh, i think i think there's a lot of bad advice on the internet but in terms of marketing advice the only way you could actually implement anyone's marketing advice is if you know your numbers is if you know mm -hmm. this is how much i can afford to spend this is how much a customer is worth to me and this is what my goals and metrics are i think we're seeing a lot of bad advice from people telling you what your goals and what your kpi should be yeah, it's actually terrible advice or what your number one metric should be. Makes no sense. I'm not your business. I can't tell you what your number one metric should be. What is your goal? What is your end result? I think it always starts with what do you want? What is the goal? And we reverse engineer from there and we build the metrics out. That's why I think our agencies, you know, and, and even with why we're so different than everyone else on the market is because we're not just coming in, sitting there listening to our the prospect and saying, yes, sir, you want to increase sales. We're going to increase your sales. We're going to, we're going to do all that. We actually reverse engineer through a goal with them because that, what happens is they then start paying a lot to acquire a customer. And then they're upset that they're paying a lot to acquire a customer. And then they want new customers and they want repeat customers. The goals just keep switching because they don't have an idea of what it is they actually want. And I think the reason why our agency is so good is not because we have talented media buyers who know how to do all that stuff as well. We understand 
that we need to work through a few things with you first, that we work with you on where your goals are. That's the whole beauty of why Amplify, even our consulting program exists, forget the agency for a second, where Amplify exists, it goes to meet you where you are. Where are you now and where do you want to be? And how can we help you? Whether that's through our agency for done for you, whether it's through Amplify with coaching and programs and training and consulting, whatever that looks like. But it's where are you now? Where do you want to be? And how do we reverse engineer it? And how do we get you there? Versus some blanket statement of like, hey, yeah, you need a 3X ROAS. Or yeah, your MER should be this. Or hey, yeah, uh, no problem. We'll increase sales. But why would you increase sales if everything else is broken and you're just going to expose a lot of holes? So I think there's a lot of bad advice out there. And I think it all starts with uh, just people like to throw things out there and give like blanket statements and a blanket screenshot. But the problem with that is most business owners want that latest shiny object and they want that done, that quick, that quick fix, that get yeah. rich quick button and they fall for it. Um, we don't let that happen. When, when you work with us. Okay, this next question is from Angela. If I want to start an e-commerce store, what is the number one thing I need to know in terms of what I'm getting myself into and what my expectation should be? Ecom, ecom theme episode today. Um, I, think, I think, again, this goes for just any business is understand nine out of 10 businesses fail, right? Your expectations shouldn't be, hey, I see, I see, you know, this brand do a hundred million dollars. I'm going to do a hundred million dollars this year. You should have that as a goal. I don't, don't get me wrong. I, I think there's nothing wrong with, with big ambition and big dreams, but we need, we need to put that into a practical sense. So how are you going to get to a hundred thousand? You know, if you, if you're not realistic about, Hey, I don't want to spend advertising dollars in order to get there, then it's going to be a very, very uphill climb for you to get there very steep. So understand, you know, that you're going to have to invest time, money, education into getting it right. Or if you want to fast track all that, I'd say work with us. Exactly. Okay. Um, this was from Jen. All right. I found a business coach or mentor that only charges $500 a month. This seems too good to be true. If he's supposedly such a great uh, coach, why is he charging so little? I don't know. Maybe he doesn't know their worth. Maybe you're getting an incredible deal. Maybe he is a great coach and doesn't need the money and just wants to help as many people as possible. Uh, maybe it's a group coaching program and you don't know it. And if it's one-on-one for $500 a month, then, I mean, it has nothing to do with saying too good to be true or, or that person's too cheap or, or if, you know, I need to go hire someone who's $10,000 a month. I've hired the $15,000 a month coaches. I've hired the $500 a month coaches. Um, I will say the ones who are more expensive tend to deliver the better results, but that wasn't always the case. I've hired like medium to high price coaches who are just awful. And I, I should just, I take that back for a second. I wouldn't say they were awful. I don't know if I was ready for their coaching. I don't know if I was ready to implement that. I don't think it was a fit. Maybe, maybe that's mm -hmm. a better way of putting it. I don't, I don't think it was the right fit. So if this person seems like the right fit and you trust them and you believe they could help them and they believe they could help you there, it doesn't matter if they're charging $500 or $10,000. If you believe that you're going to pay someone $10,000 and they are the right person that could help you get to $40,000, it's a great investment. Do that all day. If you're like, hey, I don't have money, but this person's $500 and I truly believe that they could help me get to another level, then make that investment too. It is less to do about price and more to do about fit. That price mm -hmm. is more on them. It's a more in, like I would be talking to them about their pricing. Like if they were if they were like the best in the world, charge accordingly. But if you found yeah. the guy that hasn't figured out their price yet or hasn't hasn't figured out their worth yet, go after it. Go become that yeah. first go become that person's first client, or maybe they're just starting a coaching program, or they're just starting the coaching and they want to build it up first. We did that when we launched. Um, before it was called Amplify, when we launched the coaching program um, or the consulting program, it, we charged a flat rate for a year, which was a crazy amount, which was like like a steal. Like we have one person who's grandfathered in right now still at the second version of that pricing. Mm -hmm. Like I, I would probably redo the whole coaching program and get rid of everything if I had to still charge that first, that first pricing. But I needed to build it up. I wanted to prove a concept. I wanted to build it out. 
So I offered a discounted rate. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. I just, if they're a good fit, go for them. Yeah. Price doesn't really matter. Yeah. I guess you have to give it some time too to see if they're the right fit. You can't make that I mean, I judgment. Yeah. I wouldn't sit there and say like, hey, I hired a coach. He's $1 a month. <laughs> yeah. He's $1 a month. Uh, is it worth it? Yeah, it's worth it. It's a dollar. Go spend that dollar and see if that person can help you. If that person can help you, it's the best dollar you ever spent. Mm-hmm. So don't worry too much about the pricing. Worry more about whether it's a fit and, and there's that trust and that you believe that person can help take you to the next level. Okay. We charge more than $500 if you want to join our coaching program. Yes, we do. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. Well, I guess it's time for my question of the week. Um, this has to do with coaching and mentorship. So you broke I mean, the whole theme of this show. Maybe. I know. I know. Yeah. Well, technically, Jen did our sure. last question. All right. So. Fair, fair. <laughs> All right. Um, in your own experience working with coaches uh, over the years, what is a piece of advice you were taught uh, that you've come to realize wasn't actually good advice? Ooh, that is a good one, Megan. Uh, I've gotten so much bad advice in my life that hard to keep track you know, between the good advice and the bad advice or the wrong time mm-hmm. advice. Yeah. Um, because you can have really good advice given to you at the wrong time mm-hmm. and it's bad advice. Yeah, that's right? a good point. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I think I think w- one of the worst ones was like just it's a tough one. Or what about it, maybe not even coach or mentorship, maybe just life, any, you know. Um, Life. Any kind of... <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, I, I, I just see so much bad advice out there. It's hard to distill between. Like, pick one, yeah. Yeah, and then just what the sums of of my experiences are from bad advice and bad and mistakes and experiences that that have led to that. Um, I, I think I think a bad piece of advice that that I've been given before is that you need to have everything figured out. You don't. Uh, a lot of times, you just need to have a direction. Mm-hmm. and need to go with it. Um, I, I'll tell you, I think one of the biggest mistakes I've made, and I don't know if it's from bad advice or just, you know, falling into the trap of wanting a hack or a tactic or a strategy to get me to the next level is I've ignored mindset and, and belief thinking and, and the power of thinking for a long time, um, uh, and investing in myself in my own mind and my own development that way. Uh, I've ignored that for so long. I think if I would have done that from the start and every program that you ever buy starts with like, here's chapter one on mindset. And then you always like skip that and like, all right, let's get to how I do all that stuff. I I think if I didn't skip those and I would have went through them and I didn't dismiss them as woo -woo or whatever it was, Mm -hmm. I think it would have been further ahead. Um, I mean, bad advice. School. I think you got to go to school. You got you got to fall into the school system. I think that that's a bad piece of advice we're giving there. Every, of course, every person is different. And if you want to become a doctor or a lawyer, I want you to go to school. Like I don't want my doctor to be like a high school dropout who's like, yeah, I learned this on yeah. YouTube. Self taught. Right? Like, no. Yeah, self taught, <laughs> self taught surgeon. No, not not for me. But you know, there's so many there's so many people right now that feel trapped or stuck or have student loans. Uh, beyond what they'll ever pay back because they're never going to be in a job that will ever pay them that amount to pay, to pay it back quickly. And they knew right away, they knew right away that, you know, I want to do something like this, or I want to go into marketing, or I want to go into that. So to go and get a whole degree taught by professors who have never experienced anything, and they're just teaching you things out of a textbook, and they couldn't run a marketing campaign uh, for the life of them. Uh, like, I don't know. And I had this debate with my wife all the time. Like, she's she's a nurse. So she's very academic. She's very school oriented. Uh, and we talked about our kids, right? And I said, yeah, look, I'll always promote school for them. But once it gets to a certain point, like if they wanted to sit around and play Xbox all day or PlayStation all day, then, you know, no. But if they wanted to say, hey, school isn't for me. I think I want to become, you know, I want to go to trade school or I want to, I want to take an internship at a big marketing firm so I can learn marketing or I wanted to do this. I'd be all in for that. Like there's, you know, you look at what's going on right now, like the, with, with the big schools degrees are, like I said, unless you're, unless you're doing something like dentist, doctor, lawyer, those type of things. Yeah. Degrees are useless. So, I mean, I'll, I'll go the route of like, I was always told go to school, go to school, go to school, get a good job, go to school, get a good job, go to school, get a good job. That, that was the way. Um, 
I don't think that works anymore. That's a good point. Yeah, I would probably agree with all that. More and more people would these days. I mean, yeah, for for a kid to rack up a hundred thousand dollars in student debt so that they could become like a marketing manager, like lower level marketing manager, you know, and making you know sixty thousand dollars a year and have no chance on ever paying off that student debt quickly and having a life and starting a family. And student debt is the only thing that if you file for personal bankruptcy, you're still on the hook for, for that student debt. I think it's crazy. I think it's crazy. I think it's crazy that schools charge that amount. And I think it's crazy that we that parents force their kids into those type of things. It's almost become like the if you're lost and don't know what you do, go to school. Mm, go spend yeah. go spend a hundred thousand dollars in debt to figure out what you want to do in life. No. How about yeah. you go get a job and figure out what you want to do in life? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, on right. that note, <laughs> on that note, on that note, I'm about to get into a lot of trouble with a lot of parents out here. So uh, for all your complaints to Megan and she'll handle them all for me. Um, but until next week, thank you, Megan. And head on over to uh, jportnoy.com. Um, if you want to figure out how to work with us, or if you want me to tell your parents that they shouldn't send you to school, no problem. Head on over there too. We'll add that as a service. Um, but uh, yeah. Have a great week, everyone, and see you next week.